I ask my audience as frequently, uh, how, many, how many bodies have you been in since you incarnated into this planet on this lifetime? Because um, one of the great teachers and sages of my life, a man named Muktananda uh, in India, was asked the question, what is real, Swami, what is real? And he said, um, that is real, which never changes. So anything that is changing doesn't meet the definition of being real. So who are you? What part of you meets that definition? Certainly not that body that you're in. We've all been in so many bodies since we showed up. We were all in a little body about this big that weighed seven or eight or nine pounds. And we were all in a body that was this big, a little toddler and a teenage body and a 20-year-old body. And for some, a body that has gone on, we've been in many bodies up and through the 70s and 80s, like myself, 71 years of age. Um, and if you think that body that you are in is real, then you must have thought that about your 10-year-old body as well. So I invite you to go out and bring that 10-year-old body in here, and we'll talk to it. <laughs> and you smirk and laugh and so on because you realize that that's impossible because it's not real. It doesn't exist, does it? And the same is true of the body that you walked into this beautiful church here in Assisi tonight. It will be different when you walk out. You'll walk out of here with a different body than you walked in with. So that by that definition, this is all just an illusion. It's just constantly changing and therefore it isn't real. But there is a part of each and every one of us that can remember being in that 10-year-old body and that observed it and noticed it and that you can close your eyes and be there. You can do everything you did when you were 10 or 12 or 20 or 30 or whatever. And so it is to that element of your consciousness, of your awareness, of your reality that I address this, these remarks. Not the body, not our physical possessions, but uh, our soul, our spirit, our divine mind, whatever we call it. It is, it is to that, that is the only thing that is real. And when we learn to live from there, from that, that place, I call it the higher place, the higher self or the highest self. The part of us that realizes that uh, all of us, you know, the poet T.S. Eliot said that we shall not cease from exploration, but at the end of all of our exploring will be to return to the place from which we originated, but to know it for the first time. The poet spoke of death. I don't. I believe we can return to that place from which we originated. Uh, call it the Tao, call it God, call it soul, and come to know it. And this gathering here for this miraculous journey that we're all on um, began as an idea. I think it was my idea, but I know that something bigger is always moving the pieces around. <laughs> and I'm always aware that uh, even though I think that uh, it's me making the choices, I also know that uh, uh, I'm also the spear carrier or the extra in a much, much larger drama. And that I am being told how to be. And the more I listen to that voice, that calling, that um, that pulls me in, in, in a direction away from where I was um, in the earlier part of my life. When I lived my life um, on the basis of my own ego and um, believed that uh, 
my self-importance and my uh, fame and my uh, abilities to do things um, had something to do with my being special. <laughs> and I've come to realize that it's not that way at all. I've often said that true nobility is not really about being better than anyone else. It's, it's about being better than you used to be. And I think being better than you used to be really means less and less attachment and reliance upon your stuff, your body, your accomplishments, your reputation, your accumulations. Less on that and more on um, the inner mantras. See, the inner mantra of the ego, which I've had to learn to shed and tame, uh, is what's in it for me? 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 What can I do? How much can I get? I'm in competition with. I want more. More, more, more. Everything I have, I own. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. That's the mantra of the ego. You all recognize it. But the mantra of the higher self, the God-realized part of ourself, is how may I serve? How may I serve? How may I serve?